I'm going to unbox and install this turbo swing bar on my pontoon boat with a Yamaha 70 horse outboard motor. I'm not affiliated with turbo swing in any way, I just chose this tow bar because it's rated for towing tubes while many deck mounted tow bars are not rated for tubes. I also like that the turbo swing mounting brackets attach to the existing motor mount and that the bar is easily removable. I bought this direct from turboswing.com which I believe is the same company as Monster Tower. If you're installing a turbo swing, please reference your manual. This video is for entertainment purposes to see how a regular guy installs this thing. Alright, let's get into it. It's kind of interesting how they ship the tow bar. It's pretty heavy and they do a good job of wrapping it up in foam and plastic. All the hardware seems pretty beefy and high quality. The pulley attachment point for the rope seems a little weird, but we'll see how it performs. Oddly, the warning label on this bar states that you can only tow a maximum of 600 pounds, up to 3 skiers, or 1 inflatable. Particularly the one inflatable part is what I found strange. I reached out to the TurboSwing customer service to ask them about the one inflatable restriction since their marketing material says that you can tow multiple tubes. They got back to me and said that two tubes are okay, but you need to have a separate pulley for each tube and don't exceed the max pull of 600 pounds dry weight on the TurboSwing bar. This is definitely a job that you want to do with your boat out of the water. You can get a look at my motor mount here. Based on where the existing mounting holes are, I'm going to drill a hole in the bottom most mount hole so I have a minimum of one space between the two bolts that will hold the turbo swing bracket. I'm curious to see if I'll be able to fit the washer for the new bottom bolt based on how much room is left from the washer on the existing bolt. I'm going to use a half inch drill bit for the new hole. I'll use the motor mount as a guide so I get a perfectly aligned hole. You probably want to do your drilling before loosening the existing mounting bolt since the mount will lift away from the transom a bit when you take it off. I want to take my time and try and line up the bit so that I get a straight hole. The transom on my boat is fabricated with rectangular aluminum tube. This means that I have to drill through two sides of the tube before I get to the other side. Typically when drilling through two sides of something, I would measure and mark both sides and drill the two separate holes on either side rather than blasting through both layers from one side. The transom is a somewhat irregular shape so I decided that drilling through one side would probably give me the best chance of getting a reasonably straight hole. The washer fits just below the existing one. If that wasn't the case, I would have just ground down the new washer a little bit to make room. No need though because everything looks great. Now I'm going to use a 17mm deep socket to remove the existing Yamaha mounting bolt. As I mentioned before, the motor mount lifts off the transom a little bit when taking this off. I would recommend completing one side before moving to the other side. Removing both top bolts at the same time would be asking for trouble in my opinion. The turbo swing brackets are marked with an L and R to indicate the left and right sides. I'm working on the right side now so I'll use the bracket with the R on it. My motor mount uses two nuts to lock each bolt into place. I'll put those back on the same way that I took them off. The new turbo swing bolts use nylon lock nuts. I used a 19mm deep socket for the new nuts. I snugged everything up with my ratchet before moving on to my torque wrench. I had a bit of trouble locating the Yamaha torque spec for my motor. From searching around online I found several references to 31 foot-pounds for this class of motor. This seems a little light, but that's what I went with. Please do your own research instead of trusting the same torque value that I used. I didn't put any sealant on my bolts because my transom is open to the water at the bottom, so there's no worry about water getting into the boat. Okay, everything is tight and looking good. I'll repeat the process on the left side and speed things up so you don't have to watch me do the same thing again. Alright, the mounts are in place and now we can attach the brackets that hold the turbo swing bar. It has this little adjustment nub that you can use to control the angle of the bar. They recommend that you adjust it to the setting that results in the bar being in the highest position. When I initially did this, I interpreted the instructions backwards and basically installed the bar at the lowest position. This bracket is pretty annoying to put on because there isn't much clearance between the motor and the bracket. You can't get a socket in there so you're basically left to tighten it with a wrench. I ended up taking the bracket off to adjust the little nub that controls the bar angle. After doing that, I realized you can totally adjust the nub while the bar is attached. All you need to do is support the bar when you are doing this. For me, I found it easy to hold the bar up with my shoulder while making these adjustments. I finally got the bar in the most optimal place for my setup where nothing comes into contact when I put the motor up and down. The turbo swing comes with these plastic clips that limit how far the pulley can travel across the bar. There weren't any spots where the pulley could come into contact with the motor, so I just put them in the sides in the same way that I've seen in the turbo swing marketing material. 
To retain the bar, you can either use the supplied carabiner style clips or you can put a bolt through the retaining hole. I've had the turbo swing for about 5 weeks now. It doesn't lift the rope as high as I hoped it would. We get some decent rope spray and tight turns that is pretty unpleasant for the rider. I ended up buying one of those ropes that has a booster ball in the middle that keeps the rope out of the water. This has solved the spray issue, but now we have to cruise around with this large inflatable ball in addition to the tube. It is manageable though. I'll put a link to the rope with the booster ball in the description below. I'm not sure that I'm a fan of the pulley mounting point for the rope. This seems like it results in a more gentle ride but limits your ability to whip the tube when you have riders who are looking for a more exciting ride. I tried moving the plastic clips to the center of the bar to pin the pulley in place. I didn't like how the pulley would get hung up on the clips though. I'm going to experiment with moving the plastic clips to different places on the bar. Well I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.